Hello, my beloved scholars. Welcome. What we're going to be doing now is changing dollars to cents. So there are 100 cents in every dollar, right? Actually, the word cent, the root of the word cent, C-E-N, is the Latin for 100. So usually when you see words starting with C-E-N, it has something to do with a hundred. Century, it's a hundred years. So cents, in terms of dollars and cents, 100 cents make one dollar. So if we are converting dollars to cents, what we're really doing is multiplying the dollars by 100. Now, we can look at dollars because they have the decimal point there. We can actually look at them as decimals. And when we're multiplying decimals by 100, we actually just move two places to the right. So if we're changing dollars to cents, we just have to imagine you're taking the decimal point two places to the right. In other words, we are removing the decimal point because if we move it two places to the right, it's really going to take it to the end of the number. And decimals at the end of numbers can be ignored. So basically what we're saying then $3.45, if we're writing that as cents, moving the decimal two places to the right, we'd end up with 345 cents. So this is the dollar sign, this is the cent sign. We don't use them together. So this part of it is 45 cents. We don't write the cent sign beside the 45. Once we have the dollar sign and the decimal, this part over here are the cents, and this part to the right are the dollars. So when we're changing everything to dollars, to cents, just remove the decimal point. Because we're multiplying by 100, since there are 100 cents in every dollar. We're multiplying by 100, moving the decimal point two places to the right, which will give us 345. So, we're just going to move two places to the right. $9 is 900 cents. See that? $11.53. If we want to express that all as cents, so that would be 1,153 cents. $148.20, moving the decimal two places to the right. So the decimal point would end up at the end of the number, which we can ignore. So that's 14,820 cents. $3.15, if we want to just express it as cents, two places to the right, so that's 315 cents, $2.86, moving our decimal point two places to the right because we're multiplying by 100 since 100 cents make a dollar. So it will become 286, 286 cents. Now, what is this? How do we call this? This is 46 cents. So again, if we're moving two places to the right, we're only going to end up with the 46 cents. We do not need to write zeros at the front of numbers. Likewise for this, 7 cents, even though we have the dollar sign there, there are no dollars, zero dollars, so we still only call the cents. So already this is seven cents. Right? So three dollars and forty-five cents, three hundred and forty-five cents. 
nine dollars nine hundred cents eleven dollars fifty three one thousand one hundred and fifty three cents one hundred and forty eight dollars twenty fourteen thousand eight hundred and twenty cents three dollars fifteen three hundred and fifteen cents two dollars eighty six two hundred and eighty six cents forty six cents because there are no dollars so we just write back the 46 but this time we don't use the dollar sign we just use the cent sign seven cents All right seven cents so we write it back as seven with the cent sign this time so if we're changing from dollars to cents we multiply by 100 and when we're doing decimals because it is in effect decimals the decimal point is here when we're multiplying decimals by 100 we move two places to the right which would in essence get rid of the decimal point because it would put it at the end of the number and decimal points at the end of numbers can be ignored now let's change the cents back to dollars so think about it it would be the opposite operation so since when we're changing dollars to cents we multiply by a hundred or we move two places to the right if we're changing cents to dollars we would do the opposite we would divide by a hundred in which case we would move two places to the left starting at the end moving two places to the left so in other words, you should always have two decimal places when you're dealing with dollars and cents, always have two decimal places, right? So 600 cents then, we'd move the decimal point from here, two places to the left, so it would bring it here. So 600 cents would give six dollars right 941 cents would give two places that would be nine dollars and 41 cents two cents how would we write two cents so we'd still need to move two places but well, this just has one digit so what do we do we move the two places and we're going to use our beloved universal placeholder, the zero. Mathematicians absolutely love zero. So we move two places, fill our place here with a zero. So that would be, that's the cent part of it. And since we have no dollars, we are also are going to fill the dollar place with a zero put our dollar sign so this is how we write two cents using the dollar sign okay 31 cents two places to the left we'll have to fill in our zero because there are no dollars we still have to hold that place okay eight thousand one hundred and sixty four cents so we're moving two places to the left that will bring it here so that would be eighty one dollars and sixty four cents we're dividing by a hundred we're moving two places to the left two places to the left here that would make $31.08. Two places to the left. We we'll bring it here. So $2,141 would give $21.41. $9,675. 
would give two places, one, two, could put it here. So that's ninety-six dollars and seventy-five cents. Alright? So let's recap. We said that there are one hundred cents in every dollar. Right? So since there are 100 cents in every dollar, if we're changing dollars to cents, we should multiply by 100. And when we're multiplying by 100 and we're using decimals, we move two places to the right. So $3.45 becomes 345 cents if we're just expressing it only in cents, right? Only in cents, only using the cent sign. Here we're using the dollar sign, so the part to the left of the decimal is the dollar, the part to the right of the decimal are the cents. Nine dollars, 900 cents. Eleven dollars and 53 cents, Expressing it only as cents, 1,153 cents. $148.20, 14,820 cents. $3.15, 315 cents. $2.86, 286 cents. 46 cents, this is how we write it using the dollar sign. This is how we write back the 46 cents using the cent sign. 7 cents, this is how we write it with just the cent sign. And the opposite now, changing cents to dollars, we're dividing by 100, we're moving two places, two decimal places to the left. So 600 cents become $6. 941 cents, $9.41. Cents. 2 cents, this is how we write 2 cents using the dollar sign. There is no dollar, just 2 cents. 31 cents, this time there are... There's something in the 10th place and the 100th place. So it's no dollar, 31 cents. 8,164 cents, that's $81.64. 3,108 cents, $31.08. 2,141 cents, $21.41, and 9,675 cents, $96.75. Now, when do we need to change dollars to cents? If you're going to the shop, if you're going to the supermarket, and you are purchasing something, usually it's in a certain number of dollars and cents. Very rarely would you find the price to be just a flat dollar amount. So you need to be able, one, to, to know how much change you are to get back. So let's say the thing costs $5.50 and you're paying with a $20 bill. Right? So you need to work out, and we're going to be doing videos on subtraction of dollars and cents, addition of dollars and cents, so that you can work out your change that you're supposed to get back, so that you are not short-changed, you are not robbed. Right? And the cashier, well, she's using her scanner and her machines to tell her, how much change to give you back, how many cents, so many dollars. In days gone by, the cashiers had to actually 
calculate each time the customer came up with the goods the cashier had to actually write it down and add up all those items can you imagine how tedious that was and then the calculators came in but they still had to be manually punching in the, all the, imagine if you had 20 goods in your basket or 30 goods in your basket and the cashier had to be adding all of those up all the cents and dollars right and making change opening the till making change to give back the customer right also suppose you had a dollar to share suppose dad gave you a dollar to share between you and your brother or you and your sister right how many cents would you get how many cents would your sister get if you're sharing it evenly so you would split that dollar into two but how do you know many cents so the first thing you need to do is to convert that dollar to cents so we know from this exercise that one dollar would be 100 cents so now we could go ahead and divide that 100 cents by two so each person would get what 50 cents suppose it's four children we're sharing the dollar. How many cents would each child get? We'd have to divide up that 100 cents into four. So we can't take the one dollar and rip it into pieces, then it would have no value. If we just had a one dollar bill, or if we had a ten dollar bill, and we're changing it up, sharing it among four persons, we can't rip the $10 bill into four pieces. No shopkeeper is going to take a piece of a $10 bill from you. So you have to know, you have to change that $10 into smaller units. Divide it up so that you'll see how, many, how much, whether dollars and cents or just plain cents, depending on how big how large the amount of money is right so the concept is if you have to divide something up or if you have to, to take out a quantity and it's a usually the smaller amount we convert to cents you have to know how much will be left back how much you're able to take away and so on so conversion is very convenient when we're able to convert readily so just remember it's in 100 100 cents make a dollar and it's very easy to work with powers of 10 right so that's very convenient for us if you benefited from this video please share it with your friends your neighbors your classmates so that they can benefit as well don't forget to subscribe if you have not subscribed. Please leave a comment to say thank you miss. And if you would like me to do any videos on any particular topics, please mention in the comments and I will certainly do that for you. Take care my scholars until next time.